Hi there, Jay Tedeschi, Senior Technical Marketing Specialist here. Thanks for joining me with this look at Plastic Product Design in Inventor Pro 2016. We're going to take a look first at uh, utilizing some of the freeform modeling tools to assist with uh, some uh, plastic part, specifically some plastic features on um, this, the base of the Ember printer. So we'll start by creating a freeform box. Uh, we're able to select the plane that we want to start on uh, and then define the sizes and number of faces for length, width, and height as well as defining uh, planes of symmetry uh, within the body itself. In this case we are selecting length and width symmetry. So our new blob, it's essentially a box, but uh, it doesn't look like a box, is essentially 100 millimeters tall which matches the height of these uh, fastener towers. Now we'll use the crease command to essentially unsmooth those faces of this new entity and because we defined plane of symmetry uh, as both length and width when we make any of the changes here with regard to uh, any of the faces on this object those changes are mirrored about both the middle planes uh, lengthwise and widthwise. So as you can see that the angle change was mirrored, the distance change here is going to be mirrored, the radial change is mirrored. Um, so these symmetry tools uh, make it very very simple for us to very quickly define exactly the shape that we want. Now is this the optimal use for the freeform tools? Probably not, but it is a valid use for them and it is much quicker uh, than the alternative which would have been to um, basically model this with a combination of loft or um, some other set of techniques. With that, let's go ahead and join that to the rest of the plastic base. So it is now uh, combined into a single component. Let's utilize the hole command to throw a couple of uh, blind holes in here for our fasteners. Let's put in the correct diameter, 5.5 millimeters as well as our new depth which will be 10 millimeters and let's specify a flat flat bottom. Now this feature regardless of how it was defined the feature can be mirrored uh, as well as the holes which were added into it so we will go ahead and do that we'll mirror that to the other side of our base component and now let's add a we'll use the fillet command to just blend this in this could also uh, afterwards be hollowed out. Keep in mind this is an injection molded plastic part. And as such we have a full set of B-side uh, plastic part features that can automatically be added with Inventor Pro 2016. In this case we're going to add some bosses. So we'll specify the shape of the boss itself what the head geometry is going to look like, whether there's any recess in it, the diameter of a through hole, in this case for a uh, threaded fastener to uh, tap into, um, any undercuts, uh, you can kind of see in the preview this is automatically going to assume the thickness uh, of the rest of the plastic part, that's one of the beauties of the plastic part environment it is fully integrated into it's not just a, a brainless feature it is integrated into the rest of the design philosophy uh, along with the rest of the plastic part features this is very very similar to the sheet metal environment in Inventor Pro so let's add some stiffening ribs here uh, we'll specify the size the angle the location um, sizes of rounds angle of the stiffening ribs themselves relative to the rest of the part and then the angle uh, essentially relative to the rest of the strengthening ribs around it. For example, uh, let's specify the rounds as quarter inch, the blend rounds as, I'm sorry, quarter millimeter, the blend rounds as one millimeter and the offset angle as 45 degrees. And once that is done, we will go ahead and mirror those to the other side. Beautiful. It, it really, literally does not get more efficient than this. You'd be hard pressed to find a tool better optimized for doing plastic part design 
than Inventor Pro 2016. With that, let's take a look at the rib command. We're going to add a vent here. Uh, this is right under the hottest part of the uh, ember assembly. This is the lamp assembly, and we're going to add some vents to help cool this down. Uh, to select the ribs, I can window select, or rather crossing select for spars. There's only three of them, so let's just go ahead and select them. And now, very, very quickly, we're able to realize uh, what, without these types of tools, would take a rather long time uh, to create. Okay, next up, uh, let's take a look at some of the molding tools that are built in to Inventor Professional. Uh, this is part of the uh, Inventor Tooling module. There's an entire mold design uh, extension that is included. Uh, with Inventor Professional. Uh, we're going to enter that environment and we'll start by creating a mold design assembly that we're just going to call mid-plate. Now this assembly can contain uh, essentially all of our mold base um, assembly components, ejector pins, uh, literally everything that goes into making up a uh, mold base assembly. But we have to start from humble beginnings and the humble beginnings are the part. In this case, this is the uh, plastic injector molded mid plate. This holds a couple of stepper motors which uh, basically maneuver and move the printer head. Uh, we've already selected the orientation and we're going to start to select a material and we're going to do so by searching the extensive database of plastics. This is part of the mold flow analysis uh, server which is built into AIT. Now we searched for BASF materials with a resin identification code minimum of 5, energy usage of 4, and now we're refining the search by going in and specifying that we want to look at a trade name of Ultramid. Now these are fiber reinforced uh, in plastics. I will select one with a, uh, a good flow properties uh, utilizing the search engine itself and once that's selected we can now proceed with uh, some of the other mold tools that are going to assist us with regard to setting up the mold environment. We'll start with uh, gate location. We'll select just, we're going to have mold flow actually analyze the part and then recommend for us where the gate should go. You also have the option of manually setting the position of the gates, the number of gates, as well as their positions. In this case, I'm going to utilize the automated uh, gate location functionality. One of the nice things about this is that once the gate location has been defined, you have the ability to view the flow resistance plot of the material selected uh, based on the geometry, uh, the nuances of the geometry that we're looking at. Now once that's done, we're now going to again use some of the automated processes of the mold flow analysis server. Uh, this is with regard to part, part process settings. This would be injection temperature, injection time, uh, things of that nature. So literally all I've done so far is basically pulled the part into this environment and allowed mold flow to go ahead and uh, make recommendations based on the, uh, the extensive mold flow database that is built into the uh, inventor tooling component. And once the analysis is done, we can look at plots for flow time, plastic, plastic flow, confidence of fill, uh, quality prediction, weld lines, etc., etc. So with that, I want to thank you for your time, um, and I look forward to working with you again very soon in the near future. Thanks a lot.